Have you ever been hiking through the mountains or walking along a rocky shoreline and found yourself wondering, what exactly makes a rock a rock and a boulder a boulder? Are they just different words for the same thing? Or is there actually a scientific difference between the two? Today we're diving into a surprisingly nuanced topic, the difference between a boulder and a rock. At first glance, it might seem like a basic question, but as we peel back the layers, you'll see that the answer touches on geology, classification systems, and even human perception. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. To begin, let's talk about the term rock. In the simplest terms, a rock is a naturally occurring solid mass or aggregate of minerals. Rocks make up the Earth's crust, and they come in all shapes, sizes, and compositions. They can be as small as a grain of sand or as massive as a mountain. In essence, every stone you see, whether it's a tiny pebble or a towering cliff, is technically a rock. The term rock is the broadest possible classification and serves as a kind of umbrella category for all stone-like materials found in nature. Now within that very broad category of rock, we start to break things down further based on size. And this is where the term boulder comes into play. A boulder is a specific type of rock, one that is particularly large. The United States Geological Survey, or USGS, actually defines a boulder as any rock fragment that is larger than 256 millimeters in diameter, or roughly 10 inches. That might not seem very big, especially if you imagine a huge stone you can't lift, but it sets a clear boundary in terms of scientific classification. Let's compare this with the rest of the size scale. Below a boulder, you have cobbles, which are between 64 millimeters and 256 millimeters. Smaller still are pebbles, ranging from four millimeters to 64 millimeters. And then you get into granules, sand, silt, and clay, each progressively finer. So when someone refers to a boulder, they are specifically talking about a rock that is too large to move with one hand, or often even with two. In everyday language, we tend to associate boulders with massive, rounded rocks you might see in deserts, rivers, or mountainous terrain. These are the ones you'd have to climb over or walk around, not casually toss aside. Interestingly, the distinction between a rock and a boulder isn't just about size, it's also contextual. For example, a geologist might refer to a granite boulder, specifying both the size and the type of rock. Meanwhile, a casual hiker might just point and say, that's a big rock, regardless of its scientific classification this shows how flexible and often subjective our everyday language can be compared to the more rigid standards of geological terminology. Another key difference lies in how these terms are used across various disciplines. In geology, the terminology is strict and measurement-based, but in landscaping, construction, or even gaming and media, the words might carry different meanings. In landscaping, for instance, a boulder might be any decorative stone too large to lift without equipment, regardless of whether it meets the official 256 millimeter threshold. In video games or cartoons, a boulder might be exaggerated to humorous proportions, like the ones that roll after Indiana Jones, clearly meant to signify something big, dangerous, and immovable. Let's not forget that the word rock 
can also be used in a very general or even poetic sense. We say someone is solid as a rock, or that we're caught between a rock and a hard place. The versatility of the word shows how deeply it's embedded in human language and metaphor. Boulder, on the other hand, doesn't usually show up in idioms or expressions, likely because it's more specific and visual. It evokes a clear mental image, something large, heavy, and hard to move. Now, let's touch on the origins of the words. The word rock comes from the Old North French word roach, which dates back to the early Middle Ages and originally referred to a cliff or crag. Boulder, on the other hand, has its roots in the Middle English word boulder stone, which itself is derived from the Scandinavian term bula, meaning a rounded mass. This etymology reflects how boulders are often smoothed by natural forces like water and wind over time, especially in rivers and glacial paths. From a practical standpoint, the difference between a boulder and a rock can matter a great deal. In civil engineering, identifying the size of rocks on a construction site can influence what type of equipment is needed. In environmental studies, knowing whether a terrain is made up of boulders or smaller rocks helps determine water flow, erosion patterns, and even the types of plants and animals that can inhabit the area. So, while the difference might seem trivial at first glance, it has real-world implications. In sum, all boulders are rocks, but not all rocks are boulders. The term rock is incredibly broad, encompassing everything from microscopic grains to mountain ranges. Boulder, on the other hand, is a much more specific term that denotes a rock of a certain size, typically large enough that you wouldn't want to stub your toe on it or try to lift it without help. Understanding these distinctions not only helps us use more precise language, but also deepens our appreciation for the natural world and the forces that shape it. So the next time you're out in nature and you come across a stone that seems too big to budge, you'll know you're probably looking at a boulder. And when you pick up a small piece of gravel to skip across a pond, you're just holding a tiny rock. Different names, different sizes, same fascinating world of geology. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.